Phishing is a kind of attack where a hacker tries to approach you impersonating someone else, like a company for example. And then they try to lure you into giving away your own personal information, like the login credentials to your bank account or your social media accounts, whatever it is. For example, have a look at this email. It says that there was a suspicious login activity on my Instagram account and that I need to reset my password by clicking on the link. When I click on the link, I'm taken to what seems to be an Instagram login page. But when I put in my username and password there and click on login, my details are directly sent over to the hacker who approached me in the first place. This is called phishing and it's one of the largest cybersecurity threats that exist on the internet right now. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is for someone to run a phishing campaign and trick you into giving away your own personal information. Before getting started, I'd like to give a quick disclaimer I would like to make it very clear that this video is intended only for educational purposes. The tools and the information that I'm providing in this video are completely from a red teamer's perspective. I do not encourage anyone to perform illegal activities. Companies actually pay hackers to hack into their security infrastructure and hack their employees to make sure that they harden their security and they train their employees to better stay safe from such cybersecurity threats. So the tool that I'm showcasing in this video is also only intended for that purpose. Do not use the concepts or the information that I'm showcasing in this video to hack others without their consent. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's create a phishing campaign and let's see how that works. In this video, we're gonna use a tool named GoFish, which is an open source phishing framework which allows you to create and manage phishing campaigns all from a very clean web interface. We're gonna install GoFish on Chasm Workspaces, which is a Docker streaming platform. If you watched my videos, you probably already know what Chasm is, but for those of you who don't know what Chasm does, it enables you to create Docker containers and access them directly from your web browser. So you can spawn up isolated Docker containers from different Docker images and then stream them directly from your web browser. You can install Chasm Workspaces on your local Linux machine or you can install it on a cloud instance as well, whatever works for you. In this video, I'm gonna install it locally on my machine. But installing it on a cloud instance obviously comes with a lot of benefits because you get your own public IP address and you'll be able to access your Chasm Workspaces from anywhere across the internet with your public IP address. But anyway, if you don't want to rent a virtual machine on the cloud, you can just install it on your local Linux machine. So here is the official installation guide of Chasm Workspaces. I will leave this in the description below. First, I'll go into my temp directory and then I'll download the latest version of Chasm Workspaces uh, using this command over here. You can see we are using curl to download uh, the Chasm Workspaces from this particular URL. So I'll just hit enter and that's going to download Chasm Workspaces. Now if I say ls, here is the tar.gz file that I have downloaded. So I'll just say tar xzvf followed by the file. And that's going to extract it. And now inside chasm release, I have a installation script called install.sh and I can simply run this with sudo privileges to install chasm on my machine. So let me do that. I'll say sudo install.sh and there you go. All right, so once the installation is done, it's going to print out the default credentials. So I'm gonna save them in a text file like this so that I don't lose them. And now I can just open up my browser and then just go to HTTPS 127.001, uh, click on advanced, accept the risk and continue. And this is the Chasm Workspaces login page. So I can now come back, copy my username, paste it here and then copy my password and I'll paste in here, click on login and this is my Chasm Workspaces dashboard. So I'm gonna to go to Workspaces here. In a fresh installation of Chasm, there are no workspaces pre-installed. So you can just click on Add from Registry here, which is going to bring you to this page. So you can just scroll down and choose Ubuntu Focal or Ubuntu Jammy, whatever you like. I'm gonna use Ubuntu Focal here, click on Install. All right, it looks like the download is done. Now I can just click on it and select Open Session in a new tab and click on Launch Session allow the pop-ups and there you go. We now have ourselves a Ubuntu machine inside a isolated Docker container. So inside this container is where we install GoFish, right? So I'm gonna open up Firefox 
and search for GoFish. GoFish, getgofish.com. That is the website, that is the official website. So I can just click on download and that's gonna take you to the GitHub repository where you can download the pre-built binaries. So I'm gonna copy the link for the Linux 64-bit.zip file. And inside here, I'll just download that zip file. By the way, all the commands that I'm executing right now, you can find them in the description below. So here I have the zip file downloaded. I'll just create a new directory called gofish and move this zip file into that directory. Go into that gofish directory and now I'm going to unzip the zip file with unzip. And that's it. Now I have the files that I need to run the GoFish server. But before I can run GoFish, I have to make this binary executable. Otherwise, it's not going to execute. In order to do that, I'll say chmod plus x to make it executable, followed by the file, which is GoFish. Now I can just run GoFish like this, and it's now up. So I can just open up my browser and go to 127.001, colon 3333. I think we need to connect to that through HTTPS. So let's try that. And there you go. We have a GoFish login page like this. So the default credential is going to be admin for the username and the password is going to be displayed on your terminal. There you go. This is the default password. So I'll just copy it, paste it here, click on sign in, and it's going to immediately ask you to, to set a new password, obviously. So you can just set a strong password for yourself. Click on save password, and that is your GoFish dashboard. Now, since we have installed GoFish on Ubuntu, we can now convert this session into a custom Docker image so that we can directly spawn up GoFish from Chasm Workspaces. So in order to do that, you can just go back to your uh, Workspaces dashboard like this, click on admin, and then go to sessions. And this is going to list your Ubuntu focal session, which has uh, GoFish installed. So I can just click on create image right here. You can just click on submit and that's going to create a new Docker image. So if you come back to your workspaces, this is the newly created Docker image. Let me go ahead and uh, destroy this one right here because we don't need that anymore. I'm gonna delete that session. So you can see the exclamation mark here that says that the image is still building and Chasm is going to need some time to build the image and deploy it to workspaces. So I'm gonna wait until that is done. So there you go, the image is now successfully built. But before I actually go ahead and spawn up this image, there is some configuration that I need to do so that the GoFish server will be spawned up automatically when a new session of this image is created. So to do that, I'll go to my admin dashboard like this and then click on workspaces. And this is the newly created uh, image that we just created. So I'll just click on edit and I'll just name it to GoFish. And you can also change the thumbnail image, but I don't care uh, if it's the same thing as Ubuntu, but you can change it if you want. And make sure this is enabled and then scroll down. And here in the Docker exec config, we will first create a field called first launch. And inside that, I will mention a command, meaning the command that I want to execute when a new session of the Docker image is created. And the command that I want to execute is a bash command. So I'm gonna say bash dash C. First, I'm going to go into the directory where gofish binary is installed, which is going to be in home chasm user slash gofish. And then I'm going to run the gofish binary like this. And yeah, that should be it. So if I click on submit, the image is successfully updated. So now I can go back to workspaces and then spawn up the a container or a session of our GoFish image. And let's see if that works. So it is spawned up. If I open up my browser, you can see the GoFish server is automatically spawned up and we are now able to access our GoFish dashboard. So awesome. So whenever I create a new session of this image, GoFish would always be up so it's ready to go. Anyway, so that's about installing GoFish inside Chasm Workspaces. And now it is time to actually create 
a phishing campaign. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and install a tool called ngrock, ngrock.io. This is like a proxy tool that you can use to create a secure tunnel from your local host to the internet so that you will be able to access the phishing pages that you have created with GoFish. So let me go ahead and download it. So let me download the file, open up my terminal, go to the download directory, and then let me extract that file with tar. Uh, once you do that, you can create a free account on ngrock and that's going to give you an authentication token. So you can just add this authentication token to your ngrock so that you'll be authenticated while using the command line interface. And that's it, the authentication is now saved. I can now use ngrock. So I'll say ngrock HTTP space 80 because that is where the phishing pages that we create with GoFish will be hosted on. So this is the public facing ngrock URL that we have that we can use for our phishing attacks. So anyway, back to the GoFish profile. The first thing that you need to do is set up a sending profile so that you'll be able to send emails. You will be able to send phishing emails from GoFish itself. So you can just click on new profile here and I'm gonna name this as my Gmail profile. Since I'll be using a Gmail address for my phishing attacks, uh, the SMTP host would be smtp.gmail.com colon 465 which is the port and the username would be my uh, email address which is lee.nover156 at the rate gmail.com and then the password this is not going to be the password that you normally use to log into your gmail account instead you need to create something known as an app password and once you generate an app password you should be using that app password here the normal password that you use to log into your Gmail account would not work. And you can simply do that by just going to your uh, Google account and there is an option under two-factor authentication that enables you to generate an app password. So just generate an app password and then use that here. And that's it. You can now just click on save profile. Oh, you also need to mention the from address, which is nothing but your email address. Click on save profile and the profile is now added. Awesome, the next step would be to create an email template for our phishing email. So in this video, I'm gonna create a Instagram phishing email like this. So this email template is actually available on GitHub, which is posted by this user, free zero days. So I'm just going to use this email template. I'll just copy uh, the HTML, come back to my GoFish uh, dashboard, click on email templates, click on new template, and the template name, I'm gonna make it Instagram login or Instagram alert. And I'm gonna paste in the HTML here. So if I just click on source here, that's going to render the HTML for you and it's going to display how it's going to look like. It basically tricks the user into thinking that someone tried to log into their Instagram account and it just shows a random uh, OTP like that. Doesn't really matter, but what matters is this thing over here. Reset your password. This is a link, and when the user clicks on this link, they're going to be taken to our Instagram phishing page uh, where we can actually harvest the user's credentials. So that is the important part. So anyway, I'm gonna set the email subject to urgent action required suspicious login activity on your Instagram account, something like that, something that is convincing. And you don't need to give in the envelope sender that's going to default to your Gmail name. So I'm gonna click on save template and the template is now saved. And now that we have created the email, the phishing email template, the last step would be to create the actual phishing page. So I'll click on new page, name this as Instagram login. And for the HTML, I'll just paste in the HTML of my phishing uh, page here. And once again, this is uh, taken from one of the GitHub repositories. You can see this looks exactly like an Instagram login page because that is what we want. We want to trick users into providing their username and password here so that we can collect it from our GoFish dashboard. And then make sure you select capture submitted data and also capture passwords because this is going to capture both the username and the password. And you also have an option to redirect the user once they submit their credentials. And in this case, let me just redirect them to the actual 
Instagram website like this. Let's click on save page. Now we are good to go. We are good to start a phishing campaign. So I'll just go to users and groups, click on new group. Uh, I'll just name it as test group. And here is where you add in your target. In this video, I'm gonna target myself. So I'm gonna give in my first name, my last name and my email address to where I want this phishing email to be sent to. And I'll just add this user into this group. Click on save changes. And now I have a new group with one target. So now I'll go to campaigns, click on create a new campaign, name it as Instagram fake alert. And I'll choose the email template to the Instagram uh, alert email template. The login page is the Instagram login page and the URL. This is really important. This should be the URL that your target can reach. So remember that we have spawned up an ng-rock session like this. So I'm just gonna copy this URL right here and paste it here. Since this is a public facing URL that is redirecting all the traffic to our local host where the GoFish server is running, that should work. So the launch date, I'm gonna set it to today and then finally select the group, click on launch campaign, click on launch and the campaign is launched. You can see immediately one email has been sent to the target. Uh, the only target that we have in the group is myself. All right, so you can see I have received the phishing email in my inbox. It says urgent action required. Suspicious login activity on your Instagram account. Hi Teja, once again, you can see it's uh, replaced with my actual first name. So it looks more convincing. Someone tried to log into your Instagram account if this was you, please use the following code to log in. And then this is some random, not random, but a, but a static OTP, which, which doesn't matter as I already said. But then the next part says, if this wasn't you, please reset your password. And this is a link. It's going to take me to the actual Instagram phishing page. This, as you can see, looks exactly like Instagram login page. But let's see what happens when I, you know, put in my details here. Let me put in my uh, my username and put in my password here. Click on login. It actually redirected to the official Instagram website just like we instructed it to. But if I go back to my GoFish dashboard and if I just refresh this page, you can see it tells us that the email has been opened and the link has been clicked and data has also been submitted. So. If I extend this, click on view details here, you can see it shows me the username and the password that I submitted on the Instagram phishing page. That's crazy easy, isn't it? The most recent build of Chasm Workspaces, which is version 1.14, also has a language translation feature where you can actually change your language. And when you change your language, it is reflected across all your Docker images, all your containers, all your sessions. So this will also enable you to create phishing campaigns in languages other than English, in multiple other languages. So that's another very cool feature of chasm that you can take advantage of when creating phishing campaigns. So you just saw how easy it is for hackers to run phishing campaigns and trick you into compromising your own sensitive details. Now before ending this video, I'd like to also give you some tips to detect such phishing scams. The first and the foremost is to actually look at the email address from which you are receiving such emails. In this case, you can see I've received this email from a Gmail address. And if it were real Instagram, you would receive it from an email that ends with at the rate Instagram.com and not at gmail.com. So that's a major red flag right there. This is not from an official source. Next, when you click on the link, it opens up the phishing page. And it's very important that before you submit your sensitive details anywhere on the internet, have a close look at the URL. That is not Instagram that is ngrockfree.app. It's not instagram.com, it's ngrockfree.app. So if it were real Instagram, 
you would be taken to instagram.com, not any other domain. So that's another red flag. The reason why people fall for these attacks is they fail to pay attention to the details which are right in front of their eyes. So the next time you receive an email that looks suspicious, look at the email address from where it came from. If it's not from an official source, it's probably just scam. Uh, just delete it, don't ever respond to it. And also when you're submitting your sensitive details like your credentials or your bank details, whatever it is, make sure that you're submitting it on an official domain, on an official website. If you see a URL like this, probably just a phishing attack. It's probably just a hacker trying to harvest your sensitive details from you. And sometimes hackers also purchase domains that look very similar to the real domain name. So it's very important that you look closely at the domain name before you're submitting your sensitive details. So that'll be all for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.